Hey everyone, it's Dr. Jason West with Ask Any Medical Question. It's a show that we're calling a Hellness to Wellness Time with Dr. Jason West. So what does that mean? It means we're taking people that were out of hope and out of time and out of options and we're helping them to get their lives back. So don't forget to like and love the video and share it with your friends. It really helps us to get the channel out to help more people. So please join with us and like and share the video. Now, if you missed our live earlier today, go check it out. Our good friend Julie Harmon tells us about her experience of being so sick that she was medically disabled. She couldn't work. She couldn't function. We started treating her for chronic infections by stimulating the immune system, which is IV vitamin C. So, whoops, I'm having a little bit of microphone problems. I apologize. What a mess. Sorry, guys. Okay. I got all excited about it and knocked my microphone off. There we go. Anyway, so Julie Harmon, I just got to come pick that up, is uh, medically disabled. We put her immune system back together, and she got one of our home ozone units. And when they were in the office today, they drive three hours over to the office. And her and her husband, I was saying, how was the ozone treat again? He's like, oh my gosh, it's making her so much difference. It's making her happier, it's giving her more energy, and that's because when you get extra oxygen in the body, great things happen. And so if you've missed our live, she's had an amazing outcome. Look at it on our channel, both on our Facebook channel and we're gonna get over onto our YouTube channel. Now if you're interested in a home unit, it's easy, just comment ozone, hashtag ozone, and we'll reach out. We just have a couple left, but it's so important for people to have those I was talking to another patient slash friend, Linda, earlier today, and she was asking, hey, should I have this? What is it good for? And the answer is oxygen helps nearly every biochemical process. They call it the Otto Warburg effect. If you get glucose into the body, which is sugar from protein, sugar from fruits, sugar from honey, sugar from uh, artificial sweeteners, I mean, any type of sugar that you get in your system, the body's gonna break it down for building blocks or energy, and if oxygen is the final acceptor in the train in the mitochondria, the electron transport chain, then the byproducts are water and carbon dioxide. If you don't have that, the byproducts are pyruvate and lactic acid, and that's where so many people take that pathway and go wrong, and so when you can reduce or reverse oxygen inside the body, great things happen. Julie was a perfect example of this. And so as we got ready to do our show, I asked people, or I told people, hey, we're gonna do the show live with Dr. West. So if you have a question, please put it in the comment section. I have a team that's putting questions up here on the screen so that I can see and go over. But I've been flooded with requests to talk about different things. And the biggest one is, Dr. West, how do you be healthy? And the answer to that is, you put everything in the body that you can that's healthy. You try and avoid things that aren't, aren't good for you. You get your body on a schedule, try to go to bed at the same time, try to get up at the same time, try to eat and drink at the same time. It's really helpful for the body to have an order and have a structure. So those are kind of the outline of rules. And then what's really important is when you sit down to eat, you should have a rainbow of colors on your plate. Some red, some green, some yellow. And if you've seen any of the um, radio interviews and the national TV spotlights that I've been doing since April, um, on Fox, in the Fox News affiliates, you'll see that we keep talking about healthy foods, you only eat foods that spoil. And people say, hey, wait a minute, why would you tell me to eat a spoiled food? And the answer is, no, 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 just eat it before it spoils. So get your body on a schedule, eat healthy and alive food, colorful food, those are the basics. And then we wanna talk about some different questions they have. So if you have a question for me, please put it in the comment section, my team will pick it up. And also, if you like and share the video, it will really help our reach in our channel and stuff like that. So let's go through a couple questions. Number one, doipotence contracture. My friend Robert asked this, and I said, okay, here's what that is. That's basically a ligament tightening here in the, in the hand. They call it the papal sign, and you'll see people that literally have a finger that is pulled down because the tendon is tightened and there are multiple ways to take care of it depending on the severity. Now, my dad taught me, and I'm biased because my dad practiced for 51 years, he passed away a couple years ago, but he taught me 
a really important lesson one is that vitamin E helps to lubricate the tendon. So if you have a trigger finger or doipedens contracture, a natural source of vitamin E is really, really good for you and you want to take it orally and then on the doipedens contracture, usually vitamin E comes in little pills and you pop the pills and you can rub it right here on that contracture and it'll help to soften it up. And another thing that's really important, selenium seems to help doipedens contracture and soft tissue contractures. And so vitamin E and selenium for that. Now, if it's really severe, the only thing that uh, really is an option is to surgically remove it. And in medium cases, you can go in and you can inject that um, tissue with um, vitamin B12 and magnesium and, and it's literally like a little aponeurectomy, which means they're gonna go in with a needle and you can kind of loosen that up. And I've seen um, a doctor that in our courses that we were doing, will pull that finger and kind of break everything up. Now that's kind of a, you know, extreme for the, if it's just starting to develop, what you want to do is um, vitamin E and selenium for doipedens contracture. Also from an IV perspective, vitamin C helps with connective tissue and there's a refined tree sap called dimethyl sulfyl oxide, DMSO, that softens the tissue that I've had really good outcomes with soft tissue contractures hardened contracture, scar tissue, vitamin um, C and DMSO is really effective for that. So you'll want to put it in here. Now we have MRSA, uh, we have a MRSA question, but here's the other one, psoriasis. And I think this is my friend on YouTube, Cupcake Paper. So if you're watching Cupcake, hi from Dr. West, um, or, uh, psoriasis. Okay, so the skin is an external manifestation of internal problems. So that's a big mouthful of saying, if your insides are healthy, most of the time your skin's healthy. When you have a skin condition with rash or eczema or dermatitis, atomic dermatitis, psoriasis, what's happening is, is there's an inflammatory state and it's pushing things out through the biggest organ of the body and that's the skin. So how you treat psoriasis? The first thing is, is we want to reduce inflammation in the body and the best way to do that is to get off inflammatory foods. So anything man-made or synthetic is gonna be really good for psoriasis and the elimination of grains. Now, this is really popular right now. It seems like any healthcare condition goes on. People come in the office, they'll say, what have you tried to do for this? And they'll say, well, I want, went on an anti-grain diet. And I think this is a great start for so many things and the thing that I would tell people is most of the time, people don't do it for long enough. They'll say, you know, I stopped eating grains for a week and nothing happened. Well, what's happening is the gluten that's inside of those grains, it goes into your GI system and it paralyzes the little fine fingers in there, the microvilli that absorbs food and takes it in the GI tract and puts it into the bloodstream. And gluten paralyzes that. And what the research that I'm aware of it takes about 90 days for you to recover from a gluten attack or gluten episode. So what does that mean? That means if you've done it for two or three weeks, it's not long enough. You need to go 90 days and it's different than a weight loss diet because you can eliminate sugars and, and your metabolism will do pretty well. But then what happens is if you go to your kid's birthday party or you go to your mom's for something and there's a, a brownie or, or she made dessert and then she gets hurt if you don't eat it. I know this from personal experience. And then you eat it and what happens is your sugar levels will spike and 24, 36 hours later, it's out of your system. That's not what happens with gluten. Gluten takes about 90 days for those microvilli to heal. And I think it's a great place to start to getting off a of grain. And I've seen a lot of psoriasis cases over the last 20 years, doing a combination of balancing blood chemistry, so you do a blood test, and you give the body the most important vitamin, which is the vitamin that you need, and that depends on what's on your blood test, but getting rid of gluten number one for 90 days, there's a lot of neat things that you can do for psoriasis. Now, a common side effect goes into question number three of the psoriasis, which is psoriatic arthritis. And what that means is it's an irritation of the joint that frequently goes along with skin conditions. The joint gets angry, it's upset, it's an inflammatory arthritis or inflammatory arthritis. And as you get the inflammatory foods out of the system, 
there are some really neat things happening. Now, along with the avoiding of grains for psoriasis, some things that really help with that are high dose essential fatty acids, particularly omega 3s. You want to be about four to 6,000 milligrams of vitamins, uh, essential fatty acids, and you want to make sure that your body's absorbing it. How does it absorb it? It absorbs it through the gallbladder and the liver system. And so if you're emulsifying or breaking down fats, it has a tendency to get those fats inside of the system. It really helps skin conditions. And the other part that helps from a natural inflammatory standpoint, because with psoriasis, a lot of the medical treatments are an anti-inflammatory immune protocol or immune modulator. Frequently, it's one of the step down, you know, chemotherapy agents. So we'll talk about um, the different, you know, Humira and methotrexate and stuff like that. And what that's happened, that's, that's eliminating inflammation artificially, but it's not treating the cause. And I think it's really hard on your system. I'm not anti-medicine, I'm for whatever helps you, but I've seen a lot of people that number one, don't get results, or number two, can't afford the treatments, that they come into the office and they ask me, what can you do for the natural treatment of psoriasis? So get rid of grains, get um, essential fatty acids, and here's a trick. And a big shout out to my friend, Dr. John Jones, and his wife, Marilyn, who's a nutritionist, that they just have taught me so many things. Dr. Jones' protocol is essential fatty acids and proteolytic enzyme. What is a proteolytic enzyme? And a proteolytic enzyme is something that chews up protein. They act like little uh, protein molecules in the body. They circulate, they're Pac-Man, and they eat up um, inflammation. And when you combine essential fatty acids with um, when you combine essential fatty acids with proteolytic enzymes, you can get a really nice anti-inflammatory effect. It's really good for pain. And so when we do that, what occurs is you get a wonderful rebuilding effect that happens in the body. Now there's some other extended therapies like ultraviolet blood irradiation therapy, major autohemotherapy, proteomorphogen therapy, micronutrient therapy. that are all considerations for advanced psoriasis. And then when people have skin conditions, inflammatory skin conditions, has a tendency to get into their joints usually a couple years after the psoriasis. And if you balance out body chemistry, you really have an effect on the skin, but you also have an effect on the joints. Also, don't forget about regenerative injection therapy. And what that is, is we're injecting the areas with building blocks of vitamin, B12, 5% dextrose, which nourishes the area in those joint surfaces and we get really good outcomes. And it's not just me saying it, you can see outcomes for psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis on our, uh, our testimonial channel, Daily Dose Vitamin H. Matter of fact, one of my favorite ones over there, and I, I don't wanna steal anybody's thunders, I had a mom that's over there that had psoriasis. We started working on her and her little girl in the office I was asking the mom, how are you doing? And the little girl turned to me, she was about five or six, and she said, my mom does not have lizard skin anymore. It was one of the coolest experiences that we've had in the office. So it's not just me saying that with that protocol, we've seen some really good outcomes. Now, another question is about medial meniscus, and what can you do about it? Is every case surgical? And the answer is no, not every case of surgery. Matter of fact, I've seen some studies where they've done some, quote, sham um, surgery, which means that they really didn't do anything to the meniscus and they checked the outcomes. And I think that medial meniscus surgery is an overutilized treatment. Now, the classic sign when you need surgery is when you go to bend your knee and a piece of that loose meniscus gets in between the joints and what it does is it locks the knee. And if that's floating around, I think probably the only logical thing to do is surgery However, if the meniscus is just torn and you get pain on the inside of the knee, the regenerative injection therapy, we call it Prolozone. We have several videos on a YouTube channel. We've talked about it on our Facebook channel. We have a handout on it. And if you need a, something to do with arthritis or menial meniscus th therapies, just do hashtag arthritis in our comments and my team will come and, and pick it up. So medial meniscus, it's not always surgery. Sometimes it is. And the sad part about the medial meniscus surgeries, if you get it when you're younger, and when you get it you know, in your teens or your 20s, and what happens is it usually is a guaranteed recipe for arthritis later on in your 50s or 60s. The surgeon that did the medial meniscus removal is gone. He's probably retired on a tropical island somewhere. And so what happens is now you need a total knee replacement. 
So I want to save as many medial meniscus as, as possible. Another question that I have here is supplements for droopy eyelids. And this one was a little bit of a challenge because what I was going to do with uh, droopy eyelids, so the things that I would do for that was to put health into the skin. That's number one. Um, I really like using collagen for that, so we use collagen. Um, also vitamin A, there's a wonderful nutritional cream called EDAP ointment, it has vitamins E, D, A um, in it, and I really like this as an emulsifiant. You put that on your eyes, get on oral um, collagen, and then make sure vitamin C. So what does vitamin C do? Well, vitamin C is so important for connective tissue. It's probably my favorite vitamin, although I say that, and then I talk about vitamin F, and vitamin P, and vitamin G, and vitamin B number four, and some of the vitamins that people don't know about that act as cofactors for health. But droopy eyelids, let's get your skin healthy. And then another question here, receding gums. Well, receding gums, I think, is a sign of a vitamin P deficiency. And people say, what the heck is vitamin P? I've never heard about it. Well, this is the old school terminology for rootin factor. And you could make an argument that vitamin P, and there's also involved in the quercetin pathway, is the most important vitamin. Now, when people say, oh, I've never heard of it. Well, it makes vitamin C work. That's why it's so important. And when you have a lack of rootin, what happens is you get capillary fragility, you can get something called pink toothbrush disease, or if you bump up against a table or a shelf or, or something like that, you bruise easily, you're deficient in vitamin P. The best source of it is in beet leaf greens. Um, there's a fair amount of it in spinach. There's a lot of it in kale. A lot of people are not eating beet leaf greens. They don't like kale, so they're missing it. You can supplement with it, but again, the best source of vitamins is your knife and fork. So if you're having any receding gums, we wanna make sure that you get the liposomal vitamin C and you get rootin factor. There's a bunch of places that you can get it. I don't care where it is as long as you're aware of it. And so we can get rootin factor. Now, one of my favorite things to talk about in the next question is methylene resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Man, that's a mouthful. I had to practice that in front of the mirror. So what is MRSA? MRSA is an antibiotic resistant disease, and, and it's just re, it doesn't respond to antibiotics. It's a super bug. And they said, how do you treat it, particularly in the nose? So here is a couple trips for you. Recently on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, we posted about something that kills super bugs, and it's my, again, favorite vitamin. I say that every time. Vitamin B3, niacin kills superbugs and it has a wonderful effect on MRSA. Now, I like to get people the, not, excuse me, the flushing niacin because it helps to clean out your circulatory system, it stimulates your immune system, it's really good for liver, it's been shown to help cholesterol. Um, I think that's way better doing it than some of the other drugs that are on the market for cholesterol, but niacin is absolutely fantastic for MRSA. Now, what I tell people is you should be on about, start off with about 100 milligrams of niacin, and you want the flushing kind. You want the one that causes the redness and stuff like that. It's fantastic for killing superbugs. Um, if, if you haven't seen the report and the video that we've done, go back down into our, our Facebook file or go over to our YouTube channel and you type in um, vitamin B3 superbugs. It's a great little piece that we've put together it's really, really effective for MRSA. We've been able to help numerous arms, fingers, legs, um, not be amputated from MRSA. Um, we have had a really neat one at Chase Workman. We were able to save his hand, and we have a little YouTube segment on him. And then also Brent um, had a foot that they were gonna amputate. He came all the way up from California against medical advice. They were gonna amputate his foot and we were able to help them with niacin and also IV vitamin C and hydrogen peroxide. Now, another trick for MRSA that's in the nose is to do endonasal insufflation therapy. Now, this is a wonderful non-invasive therapy where you can get some ozone, you put it into a syringe, we take a butterfly needle, you cut off the end of the butterfly so you have a flat, uh, plastic flexible um, catheter and you insert it in the nose, you have the patient hold the nose like this, and you can push the, the ozone up into the nose. Ozone is phenomenal for MRSA in my clinical experience. This is how we've been able to help people to avoid amputations. 
And if you hold that in there, what happens is the ozone will kill the MRSA. You want to breathe out of your mouth. You don't want to get ozone down into the lungs. It's kind of an advanced uh, procedure, and so something that we would like to do in the office. Any ozone doctor is really going to know how to do this. And so a shout out to my colleagues that I have learned from. I learned this from a doctor in Brazil, and I'm so embarrassed I can't remember his name. I always like to give uh, a shout outs to the doctors that, that taught, uh, I want to say Herman, Dr. Herman in Brazil uh, taught me at an ozone conference how to do nasal ozone therapy. It's amazing for MRSA in the nose. The next question that comes from cupcake paper, so high cupcake paper, is how to treat parasites. Well, this is an interesting phenomenon that happens in the office because most people will say, or most medical professionals say, well, we don't have parasites in the United States. And the answer is, well, what about travel? And maybe they're just not assessing in the right way. It's a huge factor in health. We see it in quite a few patients that get uh, uh, parasites. You have some additives, you can have protoplasts, you can have ringworms, you can have, oh, there's all these different nematodes and stuff that can be a factor in health. And if you think about it, the circle of life, we're at the top of the food chain. And what are we doing all the time? We're eating plants, we're eating animals, we're eating fruit, vegetables, and nuts. And guess what? Things are always trying to eat us. Bacteria, viruses, parasites, fungus. Um, and what you want to do is to help the immune system. And I tell people uh, black walnut and wormwood are great places to start. Oregano is another one. I like uh, using a product called Clarkia that's really helpful. And if you have parasites, we actually have a parasite report. We've done multiple videos on this. And in the comments section, if you want some information about that, hashtag parasites is a good place to start. It has a huge factor in health. And if your healthcare provider is saying, I don't believe in parasites, I would suggest, well, they're just not the right member of the church because uh, it's not a belief system. It really, really affects people. It's way more common than traditional medicine, Western medicine affects. And stimulating your immune system, using those herbs is a really good start for that. Now, the next thing and asked is how much ozone water is safe to drink? Now, this is one of my favorite things to get extra oxygen in the body is the ozone. And how you do that is I recommend you're probably eight, no, eight to 10, maybe 12 ounces of ozone water. You probably can't overdo it, but I just have a hesitancy because of the weird taste that it has associated with it. Now, I say that and Julie Harmon was in the office today and we did our live cast about her story. And if you're joining us late, um, Julie was medically disabled 10 years ago, couldn't function, couldn't do any of the normal activities of daily life. She's able to get her health back. And one of the things that's really accelerated that is the home ozone units you can be aware of. And so if you're interested in that, again, hashtag ozone. But Julie's story is really, really fun to check out. And so she said, how much is safe to drink? You know, probably uh, 12 ounces is, I, I try and do three to four ounces in a shot, drink it as fast as possible because I think the taste is weird. And uh, Julie informed me today, Dr. West, you are the weird one. It tastes just fine. What is wrong with you? So I got to go back and retrain my taste buds. Now the next question that we have is an autoimmune disorder called ankylosing spondylitis. And what that is, is a over an inflammatory reaction of ligaments in the body and the ligaments fuse, and it usually starts off in your back and in your sacroiliac joints. So take an x-ray and they'll be really white. There's also a marker for that. HLA-B127 is the blood test marker. Although, in all fairness, there can be some false positives with that. But we've had some really good outcomes with ankylosing spondylitis by going through and getting the body to, to change. And so what does that mean? is we get the body on a schedule, you eat healthy. We have a great testimony on this from Casey. He's on our Daily Dose Vitamin H. He's also on our uh, Facebook channel, came in a couple years ago. He and his dad, Wade, are special to us in the office. So big shout out to Casey and Wade. But a wonderful story of how you can manage inflammation. Casey took over and said, I'm not gonna put inflammatory foods and stuff in his system. And so what that means is that he were able to reduce inflammation, we treated him with some micronutrient infusion therapy and some anti-oxidation medical treatments and also get him on some neat supplements. Marcozyme is one I really like. It acts like Pac-Man in the bottle. It's the same thing that we do for psoriasis. So ankylosing spondylitis 
It doesn't mean that you have our future of fusion ahead of you. And I also want you to be aware that there's other treatments besides the chemotherapy that they give in most medical treatments. Now, Louise Webb, a shout out, hi Louise, said, what can you do to help fibromyalgia pain? Well, this is a big question and I'm gonna try and give you the nuts and bolts of what's happening. Fibromyalgia means muscle fibers that hurt all over. It's somewhat of a garbage pail diagnosis, which means most of the time people come in and say, I've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And I said, well, how did you get there? And they just will say, well, the doctor told me, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have this. So you must have fibromyalgia. Now you should be tender at a, at least 11 of the 18 fibromyalgia points for an official diagnosis. And many times a medical treatment is some Balta or Lyrica and antidepressant and sometimes some Tramadol or some hydrocodone. I think the best way to start with fibromyalgia is to get the muscles healthy. Number one, get your body on a schedule, get off um, inflammatory foods, and then what to do is supplement with magnesium. It's so helpful. This is the miracle mineral. And almost universally people are deficient in magnesium. It's a cofactor for th about 300 co reactions in the body, enzyme reactions. It makes um, muscles, smooth muscles dilate. And then also if you have oxygen levels up, because if, again, if oxygen is not the final electron acceptor in the electron transport train, you'll generate acid. That acid gets into your muscles. And how I describe fibromyalgia to the inner circle. So almost always fibromyalgia patients will come in with someone that's there to help them, a spouse or um, a child or a caregiver. And I tell the caregiver, listen, I want you to understand what's happening in the patient because this is important because sometimes fibromyalgia patients get locked in as, hey, she's a hypo he or she is a hypochondriac or they want the attention. And I, th I think it's really unfair. So I tell the caregiver, listen, if you were to go to the gym and work out as hard as you can, eventually you're gonna use up your oxygen stores, you're gonna start accumulating lactic acid and your muscles are going to hurt. That's what the patient feels like all the time. You'll recover when the oxygen levels restore, but the patient doesn't. So that it's typically, it's hard to have a happy, shiny outlook when your muscles are hurting and they're filled full of acid. Magnesium and oxygen, that's again one of the home ozone unit ideas. Hyperbaric oxygen is a nice player in this process. Evaluating blood chemistry tests and giving the people the most important vitamin, which is the vitamin that they need. So that's the fibromyalgia. Okay, next question. Hi, Doreen. One of my favorite peeps, all the way from the great state of Washington. I've been having heart palpitations and a fast heart rate. Blood work shows high absolute lymphocytes. Any recommendations? Now, when the lymphocyte count goes up, Doreen, usually it's a sign of a, an infection, and sometimes your body's not responding to it, and the infection is almost always viral, because a lymphocyte is the cell that treats viruses. And so the first thing we need to do, get your immune system working. And the two of the most neglected organs in Western medicine is the thymus and the spleen. So the thymus is right here below your substernal notch. It's for T cell differentiation. That's the most important white blood cell that goes after viruses and stuff inside of the cell. That's what a, lim excuse me, that's what a T cell is. Lymphocytes and T cells fight uh, bacteria. We want to stimulate the thymus. You can do that with either neural therapy or there's some specific nutrients that you can help to stimulate the thymus. And then the spleen. Okay, the spleen is a blood reservoir for the body. It's filled full of lymphatic tissue. When we have extra blood, we're not doing something athletic or we don't need it, we have a tendency to store it in the spleen. It's such an important immune system regulator gland that's almost completely ignored by medicine. And there's a way you can do acupuncture to help with the spleen. You can do neural therapy to help with the spleen, but we wanna activate the spleen and the thymus. And then the next thing that we associated with your heart there's some nutritional things that work really well for that. Something called protomorphogen therapy, and that's the smallest uh, blueprint for cellular repair. It was developed by Dr. Royal Lee. I think there's only really one company that has protomorphogen therapy, and there's something specifically for the heart. And when you get diagnosed, or when people get diagnosed with congestive heart failure, 
it's not always the end because they turn into, you know, cardiac cripples or cardiologists say, hey, we don't want you to do very much exercise. You gotta be really careful with your heart. But guess what? There is a way to help rebuild the heart using proteomorphogen therapy. It's an advanced nutritional therapy. It's not something you have to do in the office. And then the last part is you combine that with vitamin B number four. So there's 30 B vitamins. We talk all the time about B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B12. But guess what? There's other vitamins, B4, B7, B8, B9. Vitamin B number four. My dad taught me this little clinical pearl acts like a nutritional pacemaker. It helps to get your heart to regulate just and it's really, really good for a racing heart. Vitamin B number four. I think the, the uh, places that you can get it naturally are raw soybeans, raw cream. Um, I know there's a couple other sources. It's fairly hard to get in the standard American diet. And so there's a supplement for it. It's not expensive to do that, but most of the time you can affect a racing heart and you can really help improve heart function in as little as 24 hours with those therapies. And then if you stay on them, I've had great outcomes of regulating the heart. I've had people that have been diagnosed as medically disabled. We put them on that protocol and they're able to function. I've even had a couple of them go back to work. All right, uh, next question from Teresa. Hi Teresa, anything that can help a child that was exposed to parents' drug use while they were pregnant? Well, the first thing is, is I, it's going back to the rules of health. You try and help the child as much as possible. Good building blocks in their system. And I would be working on their detox pathways. And so with child that have been exposed to drug abuse while a pregnancy, essential fatty acids are really, really important. I would be pretty high dosage, you know, four to 6,000. Usually the pills are 1,000 milligrams, milligrams per pill. And what you want to do is you want to help build the nervous tissue and help the any addiction patterns um, associated with the, the exposure to that. I like the theta chamber for that. There's a RTMS therapy that's available. Um, tough cases all the way around. You also want to do some blood tests and look at nutrient values. I see magnesium as a player in this, vitamin C, and then there's some really important glands for detoxification. The thyroid acts as a secondary gland of detoxification. So does the parotid gland, so the uh, thyroid glands here, the parotid glands here, the thymus is a secondary gland of detoxification. The primary glands are the liver and the kidneys, so you wanna stimulate the liver, the kidneys pick up in those secondary glands. You wanna make sure that there's essential fatty acids to, to um, insulate the nervous system and you wanna get the liver clean. There's a proteomorphogen therapy. Milk thistle is a factor. Uh, SAM-E is a really good thing for liver. It's on a case-by-case -case basis. So Teresa, if we can help you with that, uh, please get in contact with the team. Okay, the next question that we have, that to uh, Josie Brown, my friend Sarah told me about you and I believe she told you about me. So hi Josie, I've had horrible kidney pain that started 100% debilitating with other symptoms. Can you help me? Well Josie, the first thing that I wanna tell you is thanks for tuning in and as a shout out to everyone, please like and share the channel that we have. And then Josie, the next thing is, is we just have to look at how to get your cells and your blood healthy. This is a hard question with just that little bit of information, but I will tell you this. If you saw the live cast two weeks ago when they had Mud come into the office and he said, I've got a month to live. And I said, do you believe that? And he said, no. And I said, I don't either. Let's go and make your cells healthy. Let's make your liver healthy. And you know, I just recently saw blood tests. His enzymes are normal. It's, it's, one, it's just an amazing story. And so we have some pretty good outcomes, really good outcomes with kidney disorders by doing a couple different things. One is to feed the kidney and to rebuild the kidney. There's some advanced nutritional therapies that you can do for that. The next thing is to make sure that the blood is healthy as possible. So we wanna evaluate the blood. Is it healthy? We wanna get your energies balanced. We wanna get your emotions balanced. And one of the secret tools that we have in our office is, is Kelly, and Kelly is a mind-body healer that helps to take what we're doing on the physical side and get your emotions balanced out. And I think there's some really exciting things that we need to talk about for your kidney, but I need a little bit more information. But kidneys respond really well to nutritional therapy and then what's called um, neural therapy. So neural therapy is when you stimulate the skin 
over the area and it helps the nerves impacts to open, close and reboot. It's advanced German therapy. We talked about it with mud and how we did it for his liver. <coughs> Guess what? It works for your kidneys as well. So Josie, I hope that uh, we can connect. Okay, Linda Webster, what do you recommend for shingles? Well, the first thing I'll tell you is I'm sorry if you're dealing with that or if your husband or your kids are dealing with that because it's really tough. It's super common. I took care of a shingles case today in the office. I probably take one every single day. It's kind of the plague of the um, baby boomer generation. And what happens is that chicken pox virus all of a sudden wakes up and it wakes up for any reason. It, um, you know, if you're stressed, if you have a hormone change, if something really agitates you, for certainly the pandemic, the riots, your neighbor, I mean, if something agitates you, stress reduces the immune system. That virus comes out of hiding and it goes into the nerves. And what does it do? It makes the nerves erupt into the little pustules and it feels like someone took a soldering iron and puts it on those nerve pathways. And, and by the way, it's usually very specific. Um, one of my patients had it just down here in her jaw. I've seen it just around the rib cage. And what's important in the management of shingles is not only do you want to stimulate their immune system, but you also really want to protect the nerves. Otherwise, you can get a condition called post-herpetic neuralgia, which means that the shingles goes away and the nerve still hurts. It's a nerve memory thing, almost like phantom limb syndrome. You know, if you have your a finger or a toe amputated or had an accident and gets you know, removed and then you're, if the nerve isn't treated right, what happens is it's telling the brain, I hurt, I hurt, I hurt, I hurt. And even though the appendage isn't even attached to the body, that's what can happen in shingles. So a couple things are really important for shingles. You wanna dump as much vitamin C into people as possible. I really like being high dosages. Most people don't give the dosages we give in the office. Around 100 grams of vitamin C or 100,000 milligrams is a nice starting spot, not an ending spot. I think it's a nice starting spot. It's really important. Elderberry is really good. Lomatia is really good. You want to get some herbs to stimulate the immune system. And then you want to rebuild the nerve tissue of the myelin sheath. And where does that come from? It comes from essential fatty acids. It also comes from your liver and gallbladder system breaking down the essential fatty acids so the body can use them. If you don't have a gallbladder, that's okay. You just want to make sure that the liver is running as healthy as possible because the liver makes bile salts. The bile salts emulsify fats. If there's no gallbladder storage system, the, the liver has to make it on demand. So you have to be a little bit careful with your gallbladder system. You want to protect those nerves. Also, you can inject the areas of infection in the shingles area with ozone. I think that's really effective. I mean, it gets oxygen right there. The oxygen oxidizes the virus. I have seen immediate turnarounds with that. I think it's a really effective in-office therapy. And then also, we wanna make sure everybody knows about lysine. Lysine's really important for shingles. So take care of it every day. Yes, you'll get over it over time. I think we can greatly accelerate that and we can reduce the risk factor for post herpetic neuralgia. Now, Jeff Eller says, are vitamin C infusions common outside your office? And I'm gonna say they're very common. More and more people are doing them and the reason why is because they are jaw-dropping effective in my opinion. I think it's the most important thing to have access to. I just love giving vitamin C infusions. There are clinics all over the country that are doing the vitamin C infusions. Matter of fact, one of the things happening in the coronavirus and in the COVID virus in different places in New York, in Wisconsin, Houston, and in China is taking people and putting them on a 30,000 milligrams of vitamin C. That's one of the protocols that I've seen. It's offered in some hospital system. And Jeff, I think you're gonna see way, way more providers incorporating that into their system because vitamin C, it's just amazing. I would say it's probably the most researched drug. And again, the drug is, is, there's a whole different definition of that. There's over 1,300 studies in Dr. Levy's book uh, curing the incurable, just a really big fan of it, and I hope that you have access to it. If you have a healthcare condition, I hope you find a clinic that can help you with that. Now, the next question from my YouTube clan, YouTube represent, what are your thoughts about fish oil supplements if you consume a lot of fish from YouTube? Well, the answer to that, Mr. YouTuber, is the best source of vitamins and minerals, the best way to protect your health and to treat healthcare conditions is your knife and fork. 
And the concern with getting too much fish is the oceans aren't as healthy as they used to be. They aren't as, as clean as they used to be. We dump a bunch of garbage in there and certain fish have high levels of heavy metals. And what would like to not have happen is for the fish to bring the heavy metals into your system because they can be toxic to so many different things. So I like fish. I usually recommend two to three times a week. Um, I don't like bottom dwelling seafood. So oysters, scallops, um, shrimp, um, even halibut, they're on the bottom of the ocean and they have a tendency to eat the junk that's there. And hopefully they'll clean it up and they won't get into the tissues that you're going to eat. But I always want people to be careful with bottom dwelling um, things. So avocados, raw nuts, um, butter. I really like animal lard for uh, sources of essential fatty acids or really healthfully for help. They are so good for diabetes and protecting the nerves. And people that don't, aren't healthy, I t frequently tell them, you're like the Tin Man on the Wizard of Oz. And you know what helps to lubricate you is essential fatty acids. We have a combination product in the office. It's a combination of omega-3s, 6s, 7s, and 9s. So your small, medium, and long chain fatty acids, it's like taking a whole bunch of things, um, a whole bunch of different, you know, flaxseed oil, evening primrose oil, GLA, EPA, and omega-3s, putting them together. Um, I will say this, when we talk about food, um, and we talk about fish, if you're taking fish oil and you're getting fish burps after, two things are happening. Number one, almost always is the fish oil supplements you're taking are rancid, like you shouldn't get fish oil burps after you take it. And number one, perhaps it's not your liver functioning well. I think almost always it's rancid fish oils. Okay, so now I'm looking for my next question. We have a little bit of, uh, here it says, what food can I eat to get my era levels down. Hi, Sarah. We talked a little bit about this on our last visit. Um, my favorite thing to help get vitamin C, excuse me, iron down is vitamin C. Vitamin C is a natural chelator, and let's talk about iron. We did an iron video and iron post just a couple days ago. Is iron killing you? Because iron is, if too high, it's really, really bad. It can lead to a disease called hematochromatosis and arteriosclerosis, which is killing tons and tons, you know, about one out of three Americans is having heart disease, and I think iron is a big component. I also think the wrong type of calcium mixes with the iron and hardens the arteries. And a shout out to Dr. Levy, who taught me that and was one of the godfathers of vitamin C medicine. But iron levels, get your iron levels down by doing some iron chelator. So vitamin C, um, fruits, vegetables, green leafy vegetables, citrus fruits, but don't drink them, you want to eat them. Another thing that's helpful is, is some of the other mineral supplementation, zinc, molybdenum, selenium, are I think really good to get the iron levels down. Donating blood periodically is another one. And then the last thing is IV chelation therapy. So Sarah, to answer your question, just do a quick Google search, go to my friend Dr. Google and look at high vitamin C foods. What they do is they help to reduce iron levels and then let's test your blood in about six months too much iron is really, really toxic. Too little iron is, uh, makes you anemic. So it's like blood sugar, it has to be balanced. Okay, wrapping up, what we're doing is our live, it's Hellness to Wellness. We're gonna be doing replays and stuff on this. If you have questions, please put it in the comment. And if you're picking this video up a little bit later, please love the video and share it. It really helps us to get our reach out. This is something we've been doing for the last couple of weeks. And I'm excited to tell you guys about next week because so many things happen inside the office and my girls will say, do you know what? I tell people what happens in the, in the office and people don't believe us. So we're actually bringing in one of our team members. We're gonna just have a nice informal discussion next week. It's gonna be really fun. She's seen everything over the last five years and she volunteered to come onto the program. We're gonna have Tasia here next week. We're gonna talk about what we actually see inside the office. And so next Thursday, five o'clock mountain time, again, question and answer period. We're gonna do a little bit with Tasi at the beginning. And so anyway, please uh, like and share the video. Last question, Amanda Budakofer wants a review on how to build your immune system to prevent viral infections. Okay, Amanda, this is what I tell people about, especially in the middle of the pandemic, is we want to make sure that we work hard on your mucous membranes and also your respiratory system. There's a lot of literature and research on this, on vitamin A. So here's what vitamin A does is it lubricates it, it stimulates the immune system. 
There's a lot of studies on different viruses that it helps to protect um, children against different viruses. Um, it, there's no specific literature on the coronavirus, but biology is biology. If, if vitamin A helps your immune system protect against viruses, I think this is something really smart. I've been recommending it to everybody that's come in the office. About 10,000 units of vitamin A. If you are symptomatic, you are symptoms of a rhinovirus or a respiratory infection, you can go up to 30, 40,000 units of vitamin A is, is typically what I've seen and recommend for my patients. Vitamin D3, 10,000 units is a maintenance thing almost all year round. I see chronic low vitamin D tests on so many patients. Almost everybody that comes in the office, we do a vitamin D test and what happens is it's low. And, uh, and I've seen them, you know, seven, I've seen them eight, 13. Ideally, I think you wanna be between 70 and 100. 10,000 units of vitamin D as a, as a good place is my recommendation. Again, my recommendations on this video are not meant to take the place of a doctor-patient relationship. I just wanted to give you information that you can ask your healthcare provider about or you can set up a consult either inside the office or a virtual thing. But 10,000 units of vitamin A, 10,000 units of vitamin D, 3,000 units of vitamin C. Now my favorite kind is liposomal vitamin C. What it is is vitamin C that's mixed with the fat so you get the benefit of essential fatty acids and vitamin C and then about 30 milligrams of zinc is a good place. I've had really good outcomes. I've been contacted all over the country about what to do, not only of people being symptomatic, but what they can do to protect themselves and their family. And, and we have actually a little pack that we've put together for your immune system. And so if you wanna put in hashtag immune in the comments, and my team will pick that up. And don't forget if you want a home ozone unit, comment hashtag ozone and we'll reach out to you. We've got a training video. We've got a really nice little booklet we've, we've put together. I think this is important to have in your medicine storage cabinet. Um, it's just like having iodine, it's like having aspirin and vitamin C and magnesium and essential fatty acids. You should have that in your arsenal. Also, if you saw our live cast last week, we talked about some exciting news. We're going to be operating a personalized supplement program. So that's this over here. What it is is we can consolidate and literally engineer exactly what you need into two bottles. One of them is custom made for you and the other one is, custom, is essential fatty acids. We're gonna have one of our patients um, either do a Skype or in studio interview, Delora, and she came in, she had such a fantastic experience. We customized everything for her and she's like, I can't even believe you how well I feel. So watch that uh, upcoming episode on our live cast and our testimonial things. And so this is Dr. Jason West with the show Hellness to Wellness or Ask Any Medical Question. Next week, we're bringing someone in that has a whole different perspective than what patients have inside the office. She's seen it all, she volunteered to be on the program, so we're excited to visit with Tasia next week inside the studio. We're also gonna have a question and answer period, and I promised that I would give away a couple different supplements. We also wanted to make sure that, that my book was available to you. So, a certain question that we're going to have is when you have shingles, what is the recommended dosage of vitamin C? The first comment that we have with the right answer, we're gonna send them some liposomal vitamin C. The next question that I have is, we wanna talk about one of the most important things to do for viral production, and that's vitamin D3. What is the scientific name for vitamin D3? The first person that answers that in the comments is gonna get a bottle from us of vitamin D3. And then the last thing, um, this is real, we're gonna send you a t-shirt to the person that can answer this question. So we're giving away um, some, uh, again, some vitamin products, we're gonna give away some vitamin D, we're gonna give a t-shirt. Okay, if you can name the founding father that said that we must put medical um, freedom inside the Constitution, you can tell me that is, I'm gonna send you a don't believe in medical freedom, these guys didn't either. It's a t-shirt that we have, and uh, we're gonna go from there. So, first person said uh, 5,000 uh, milligrams of vitamin C. Nope, that's not quite what it is. The vitamin C dosage for shingles. What is the dosage? It's a little bit higher than that. Uh, Margaret's coming up here with a, another question. 
Yes, Margaret, you are correct. 100,000 milligrams or 100 grams. So uh, my team's gonna reach out to you and get you what we promised. Teresa says, um, cholecalciferol, you absolutely are correct. Vitamin D3 is cholecalciferol. It's a lot different than vitamin D1 and vitamin D2, which can be toxic at high levels. Cholecalciferol is, uh, it takes an enormous amount. And then the last one, founding father, that said we must put medical freedom in the Constitution. He really recommended that. Is going to get a t-shirt about medical freedom. And so if we, I don't see anything right now, but if you guys will put it in the comment section of which founding father said to do that, I'll send you a free t-shirt. This is Dr. Jason West with Hellness to Wellness. I'll see you next week, Thursday, five o'clock Mountain Time. See you guys later.